Hey guys, I'm moving on up in the hydration society. Dough hydration, that is. My fear of dealing with high hydration dough ends today. The dough hydration we're going to be working with today is 90%. I'm not ready to live on the edge and work with 100% yet. What does high hydration do? It creates airy crumbs and large bubbles. Water turns into steam and inflates the bubbles. Let's talk about baker's percentage. Total flour that the recipe calls for is considered 100%. The amount of water compared to the total flour is the hydration. So if you're using 1,000 grams of flour and 700 grams of water, the hydration is 70%. There's an ongoing debate on whether or not to add the starter to the total flour and percentage of hydration. I included it. I'm curious to know what your thought is. Comment below. We're going to make the overnight country blonde bread from the book Flour, Water, Salt, and Yeast. You guessed it, my favorite book. Let's get started. This will be a two-day process. Autolise. To a bowl, add 830 grams of bread flour, 50 grams of rye flour, mix the dry ingredients together, 684 grams of water, preferably 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Mix the ingredients together until you don't see dry flour. Cover and let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. While the dough is resting, let's talk about double hydration method. Dough and flour has difficulty absorbing all the water at once, so we're going to add the water in two stages. First stage is during the initial mix, which we just did right now. Then we're going to add additional water after the completion of autolyse. Final mix and bulk fermentation. To the dough, add 22 grams of salt, 216 grams of starter or levain, 120 grams of water. Fold and mix the additional ingredients into the dough. The water might slosh a little, but keep working it in. I'm transferring the dough into a rectangle container for easy folding. I'm also oiling the container. This dough will rest at room temperature for 12 to 15 hours or until it triples in volume. It will need three to four folds, preferably in the first one and a half hours. Fold number one. I'm using two folding methods. Four edge fold. Take either the right or the left side of the dough. Stretch it out and fold over towards the other side. Repeat with the other side. Then pull the bottom up and fold towards the top. Repeat with the top. Coil fold. Pick up the dough and turn, then drop and let it fold onto itself. Cover and let it rest for 30 minutes. Fold number two. Fold number three. Fold number four. Now we're going to let it rest overnight. It's alive! Ah! Look how much the dough has grown. Pre-shaping. Lightly oil the surface and your hands. Carefully ease the dough out of the container. Stretch the dough out a little. Divide the dough in half. Flip the dough over. Pull and turn the dough to increase tension and tighten the dough into a ball. Let it rest for 15 minutes. Shaping. Heavily apply rice flour to your proofing basket. Flour the outer surface of the dough. Flip the dough so the floured area is touching the table. Pull the bottom and fold over towards the middle. Pull the sides and fold towards the middle. Do the same with the top. Carefully transfer the dough to the basket with seam side down. Add additional rice flour to the sides and top of the dough. Cover and let it rest at room temperature for four hours. Preheat your oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit with the Dutch ovens. I'm going to use the Emily Henry Bakers. I'm sprinkling semolina flour on the bottom to prevent the dough from sticking. Carefully place the dough into the baker with seam side up. Cover and bake for 30 minutes. Take the lid off and bake for an additional 20 to 25 minutes until golden brown. Do you like the edge piece? I do. Really good piece of bread. Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna give my other bread to my friends and I hope they like it. That's it for me guys, until next weekend. Bye.